And I'm joined this moment by a special guest. Arnold Dix is the uh, president of the International Tunneling and Underground Space Association. He's the man you saw in our report uh, who was showing the looseness of the soil. He was at ground zero in the morning looking at different approaches from both sides of the tunnel, the horizontal approach, the vertical approach. So Mr. Dix, thank you. First and foremost, on behalf of everyone who's tracking the story, thank you for making the effort of coming down to India and trying to uh, play your role in this rescue operation. As somebody who's seen such tunnel collapses you. internationally and specializes in this area, how, what's your assessment at this moment of the rescue operations, where they stand, and what more needs to be done? Mr. Dix, welcome. Yep, uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, inviting me here. Uh, I've been on site now for 24 hours, and I am very impressed with what I've seen. Uh, these conditions, as you know, uh, you well know, are the most extreme conditions on the planet. Uh, they, the Himalayan mountains are quite uh, are dynamic. And as you know, we, we know that with the effects of climate change uh, and the change in storm frequencies, these road linkages which are being put through these parts of, the, um, of your country um, are so critical because what, what we're seeing is that the change to the nature of storms and frequencies, what have you, is um, really disrupting even existing roads. So it's a, I, I really commend you on what you're doing with your, with your roads. I can just turn to the emergency. Uh, this, this emergency is really serious and obviously that's why I've come. Uh, literally a phone call and I was here as quickly as I could. Behind me, although you can't see it, I've got the International Tunneling Association, 80 member nations. All of those nations have given their support to me. I've got a team of it's about 60 subject matter experts behind. We're busy doing um, whatever we can to assist the team here. And the team here is awesome. The team here understand the, the mountain is better than any, anyone else on earth. And I have been shocked in a really positive way about the way the local state, the federal administration, the army, everyone just working together. And you're going to see over the next uh, few days a real, um, uh, real consolidation of what we've been busy planning. And together, we've got some, some I think, terrific uh, news for you very shortly. Uh, and today, for example, we've got another one of these lifeline tunnels uh, has actually been successfully put in. So we've got two ways to get air, food, medicine, um, everything in. That gives us a big sigh of relief. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to you know, great, great progress moving forward. Okay, Anlix, now there are, there are efforts to try and reach these workers from both sides of the tunnel. There are efforts from two places on top, and there's an effort to come in from the side. Now explain to our audiences in layman terms which of those is most likely to succeed and why and the advantages and disadvantages in the different approaches which are currently being deployed. So I'm, I'm not sure if there's been an announcement about which methods are being deployed. I think that's being announced tomorrow. Now, if you tell me there's been an announcement, then I can talk to them. But if there hasn't been an announcement, it would be no, wrong. So we've actually got details about who's coming in from yeah. where. Uh, I have those details out on our screen right now. Uh, the border road organization drilling in from the top. There's a vertical drilling being planned. We have details of the Satluj uh, folks coming in from the side. So all those details are now being put out with the bodies that are involved, uh, giving details about where okay. they are coming in from. So what I'm trying to understand from okay. you is just yeah. looking at it situationally, yeah. Which of, what are the yep. challenges in each of those approaches and which one do you think yep. is most likely to succeed and why? So I, if I can just talk to you about then generally the different approaches and why that you've got them there. And this is on the basis that what you've just asked me is public knowledge and has been released. So I'm, I'm trusting you. I'm, I'm standing here with a mountain behind me. I've got no idea what's happening. There's very poor communication here. So on the basis what you're telling me is true, this is how I see it. For the rescue mission within the tunnel, in the area that's collapsed, it's the most likely to occur quickly, but it also has a number of complications and dangers because what we've seen is that the tunnel has already collapsed. So on the one hand, it might be quick, but on the other hand, it poses some dangers because the mountain has already told us 
that it's not happy. The mountain has already collapsed in that area. So it's potentially quickest, but it's also risky because it's an area that's already unstable. And then if we say go to above the mountain, so today I went to the top of the mountain and I looked at the rocks there. The rocks there were fantastic. So for your viewers, it was as if there was a gift from nature in the rocks because exactly above the tunnel, exactly where, where the discussion is to do the vertical, um, the vertical grill, is this beautiful piece of rock perfectly suited to do this task not anywhere else it's like it's put there especially for the task and so uh, i thought this was an amazing thing so the the difficulty there is we have to drill down through a mountain and we have to aim exactly aim to hit the tunnel but we're more than like very high above the, the tunnel so if we get even out by one degree the vertical shaft might miss so the challenge there is we have to be very accurate and also it takes fair bit of time and then coming in from the side which is another possibility that is to come from the side of the mountain in that's also possible but the technology that we use for doing that is slow so that also takes quite a lot of time and we'll be going through ground that we haven't excavated through before so it would be from the side and then coming from the other end of the tunnel all all the way back around the other side um, that's very sure because that's actually along the alignment been studied and so we'd have a high degree of confidence in that but that would take an even longer period of time so all of these different options they have a balancing of risk and they also have a question of time and one of the things that i'm passionate about and i know the whole team are as well we want to and we're going to we're going to rescue 41 we're going to rescue 41 men we don't want to hurt anyone else in the process so that's that's our challenge right now and as I say, today has been a good day. Yep, ask away. Arnold Dix, when you say that the rock is fantastic and you say it with a lot of passion, what exactly do you mean? Because just in the way, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a geologist, in the way that I yeah, visualize yeah. it, okay. a rock could be yeah. a certain okay. size. How do you know, yeah. like let's imagine you're coming in from the top, that the rock extends all the way down. It could be a fantastic oh. rock in the way you're describing it for a certain oh. amount of distance and then beyond that it could be loose earth. Yeah, so... In your mountains, in your Himalayas, they've been squashed and twisted. So imagine once upon a time they were flat and now they're all squashed and twisted. So just by some miracle, exactly above the tunnel, exactly on the top of the mountain where the tunnel is underneath, exactly at that point, some rock has ended up flat and very hard rock sitting there so that we can drill from that point down into the tunnel. This hard rock is nowhere else. It's just, it's sitting there. It's been twisted up and it's been put there in exactly the right location. And it's hard rock, like concrete hard rock. Whereas all the other rock that I've been touching at the mountain, and I go in and I touch it and I check it, because that's what geologists do. It's very soft, this is why it fell down. But this rock at the top of the mountain, exactly in the correct spot above the tunnel, perfect for this job. It's perfect to build the machine to drill down to rescue the men. You said that this will take time. It's not going to be a fast rescue. When you say yep. it's going to take time, what do you have in mind? How many hours, days, or could it even be weeks? I, I was in New Zealand for Diwali when it began. And so I danced in New Zealand for Diwali. And my understanding is these men would have been dancing for Diwali when they went in for work. I'm confident that they'll be singing Christmas carols for Christmas. What I'm not sure is exactly where between Diwali and Christmas they'll, they'll be joining us back here. That I really don't know. It could be in a few days, it could be in a few weeks, but it will be before Christmas. So we've got two celebrations there, Diwali, Christmas, somewhere in the middle. Anil Dixai, thank you for taking out time and joining us in the middle of everything that you're doing. Really appreciate this. And you do bring Thank an international you. You exposure me. and lens to this rescue operation, being able to compare with what's happened internationally. So hopefully you can add that value to the teams on the ground who, as you said, are doing a terrific job and understand the mountain. So we wish you and your teams all the, the best. Whole, Thank yes. you. The whole world is here. Can I just say the whole world is here 
on India's side to get these 41 men out. We're all here. All my countries, all the people from every, every country, and I actually mean every, every country's experts are helping us here. Everyone. Because this is what good people do. We help each other in a time like this. And these are good men doing great work. And we're going to help them and we're going to get them home. God willing, it will happen much before Christmas. Thank you very much, Arnold Dix, for joining us. We thank appreciate you. your time. Thank you for your effort and thank you for joining us.